Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 393. Replacement of testosterone does more than treat specific symptoms. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the more common questions that you get asked is, how do you define normal? What is normal? You talk to me about, well, we want to return you to normal levels, normal healthy levels. And in, in my business, counseling, what I tell people is there is no normal. Everybody's crazy as hell. And so why should <laughs> well, your family be any different? Yeah. But, but medically. <laughs> that makes me feel so are, much better. <laughs> are there normals? So there is a range for normal. And there's a range for normal by your age. So so, so an age cohort. There's an like age, the, age All 50-year-olds, all 60-year-olds. Or all over 50, kind okay. of. Okay, but, you can define anyone. So, so in the hormones that decrease as we age, the lab printout will show you generally associated with your own age group, okay? So for for estrogen for women, for testosterone for women and men, for growth hormone, they tell you if you are the same as all the people or a range of people in your age group, meaning old. So that doesn't mean you're healthy. But it's what, just but like what saying, advantage is it? You know, if I'm 75 years old and, and, you're I'm average, like, uh, and I'm average, does that mean I can climb a flight of stairs? <laughs> right. I, it doesn't I, mean you, know, you can climb, climb a mountain. Right. It means that you have the average for an American, right. basically, of a certain amount of hormone that goes down as we get old and makes us get old as it goes down. So when I'm looking at hormones, I don't compare men to unhealthy older men. Good. It's like comparing everybody, you know, saying because America just got fat and we now are all fatter than we should be, then it's okay to be fat. I mean, that, that's the same reasoning. Yeah. So I compare you. You're not fat. You're average. <laughs> that's right. I mean, America's gotten fat. So, so now the average is higher than right. it should be. So now for, for hormones, I go back, just like all the other anti-aging doctors are trained, we go back to young, healthy levels. That means 20 to 40-year-olds. So we that's a range. It is not a a a done Defined deal number, right. that you need that. But if you have symptoms of low testosterone and you are lower than the, the young healthy range, then that's your diagnosis. That's how we make the diagnosis. So then I have some symptoms and I talk to you about it and I say, all right, I want to try this treatment. Mm -hmm. The treatment will alleviate the symptoms. Yes. And, and that's the only good that it does. I mean, I'm no, not, it, the le it, it also gives you a general better good health. I mean, good overall good health. It makes you, your body younger. Yeah. You get more muscle. You lose fat. Your skin gets tighter. You have, your brain works better. You, you are able to but repair some of those are all your tissues are hard better. to measure precisely. They are hard to measure. You know, so I mean, uh, you well tell being me, uh, is hard to measure. Yeah. You're going to be happier. Okay, how did I know, know that as a well, result of what you're doing? Not happier, but healthier because ha I don't control happy at all. No. <laughs> some people are at all the well. Of healthy and happy. There's yeah. some people, sadly, that are still, uh, when, even when we've alleviated all their symptoms and their levels are good, they're like, oh, okay. I'm not sure what they want. So, so you treat both <laughs> men and women. Yes. And I'm a lot more comfortable talking about my wife's treatment than my own. I know. So, but, however, we're she, <laughs> she comes to you. Mm hmm. And when she came to you, she had some specific symptoms. Those mm -hmm. have gotten better. Yep. I mean, by her own recounting. And by yours. And by mine. But what I like to talk about is she goes to her regular gynecologist mm -hmm. for checkups. Mm -hmm. 
and he's never embraced hormone replacement. He, he doesn't criticize it because he knows that we're all connected, but he doesn't <laughs> yeah. embrace it. Mm -hmm. And so he'll look at her lab results and he's like, what are you doing? This is better. This is so much better. And and it's and better than normal. It's better than most people. But she went from being You're talking about bone density. I am. Well, that's where I was going to go. She, she went from being osteoporotic mm -hmm. to normal, better than normal, mm -hmm. in a five-year period right. on, on testosterone and replacement. And that happens. And he looks at the data and he's like, properly. what are you doing? And she said, are you taking this drug or that drug or these side effects? And she's like, no, the only thing I'm doing is testosterone replacement. And every time she goes, every year, it gets he looks better. at it and he says, these numbers are better. I have to reconsider this. But he doesn't so, ever reconsider. No, he's, he's, what he's doing is retiring. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I'm going to reconsider this by just quitting. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's amazing. But right. it's not a thing. I mean, she doesn't know their bones are stronger by by any kind of evidence that she has. They're mm -hmm. not they're not right. brittle. They're not she breaking. She, like. she doesn't fall. She hasn't mm -hmm. gotten to that place. Mm -hmm. But the data that you can generate with the tests that you do mm -hmm. show her that her bones are stronger. Right, and so, that means they're going to be stronger for a long period of time. We backed her up in age yeah. to a young, healthy level of bone mass, and that matters at least. In my thinking, it matters because we've had a couple of elder relatives who have died. And within a year before dying, they fell and broke a hip or a leg or what have you. And the nurses were very careful to say this is not a, a prognostication. This is not a definite. But, but generally, when they do this, they're dying within the next year. Right. And so you worry you get old like me you worry about okay if i fall if i break something mm -hmm. does that mean the window's closing and we haven't done a bone density on you no well because in general you call men, me boneheaded well that too um we, we men men generally have good bones because they have thicker bones when they're young right. than we do and a lot more testosterone than we do so men start out with thicker bones and unless they take steroids or something else, their bones stay fairly thick as long as they've got testosterone. Uh, then they start, as they get older, which is 10 years past when women start losing their testosterone, then they start thinning down, but they started from a much thicker but it, it, place. I'm glad you're saying that because as, I, as you say it, what I'm thinking is none of the people I was talking about, the relatives that have died, mm -hmm. were men. Right. So It's not a common thing in men unless you, you've been on corticosteroids for asthma or for autoimmune diseases or something like that that made your bones thinner than a, a typical man. But if it were common, I'd be following your bone density as well as Phyllis's. Right. But I don't have to because I can just assume from your past history that you started out with normal bones. We've given you testosterone for, what, seven years? Mm -hmm. Eight? Uh, nine? Seven, I think. <laughs> no, no, not. not. But at least seven. And I... I know from from all of my um, experience that your bones are fine. Yeah. Because testosterone's made them thicker. But, so that was not a presenting symptom. No. And, I didn't and it come has to you no and symptoms. say, I have this symptom. I came to you and said, I, I have some other mm -hmm. symptoms that according mm -hmm. to what your literature on your website says, tells me maybe I ought to consider this treatment. Right. Things that you could feel. Yeah. So, but then there are some things that when your doctor looks at your lab, they go, oh, look at that. That's bad. That's a predictor of heart disease. Or that's a predictor of diabetes. Right. Right. So, or so, prostate cancer. Or prostate cancer. Yeah. And so when we look at those, you don't feel any of those things. No. A patient doesn't know they have that until they've had blood work done. So those things get better with testosterone as well. Right. So when we look at cholesterol, LDL cholesterol is the bad one. When we give men... I, let me rephrase this. 90% of men's LDL cholesterol gets better. There's a 10% genetic high cholesterol that doesn't get better with testosterone. And it and I don't know why it doesn't get better. But I'm 90% of the men, when I look at their tests before and after with low testosterone and high cholesterol, their, when their testosterone is normal, their cholesterol comes down to normal. And we don't have to use cholesterol medications. But there is, I don't want to make this sound like a cholesterol treatment because there's 10% of the population it doesn't, it's not effective for. Right. But it makes you healthier and decreases your risk of heart disease. Well, symptomatically, what, I'm comfortable saying that, that there was a point where I was talking to you about saying, 
mood swings are happening to me that are not typical for me. I, right. I get teary or I get angry mm -hmm. with no warning for no reason. And I don't know how to understand it. And you said, maybe your testosterone is low. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what's that got to do? Yeah, you because know? you deal with those symptoms in other people every well, and day. And I listen to people talk <laughs> about horrible things and I don't tear up and cry, but I go home and I watch a commercial on TV, you know, some beautiful little scene and kids playing and <laughs> old people loving and, and it's like, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's unusual for you. Yeah. And that's and not I, your typical I don't personality. Want yes. Yeah. Or I'm driving down the highway and I get mad at somebody, you know, right. you road rage and it's like that. I typically don't get mad, which which is something that it, you can't really quantify, right? But you just know it's not you. And, I mean, I remember and that having was my concern. No testosterone and being angry at everybody. It, well, it was, <laughs> it was my concern and my wife's concern. Mm -hmm. she, you need to figure out what's going on here. This is happening. And like, so, no, 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 it's not happening. That person cut me off. But and it went away when you got your it testosterone. Did. It absolutely did. And so we can measure that symptomatic and, relief. And that's of the opposite that. of what everyone tells you. Yeah. They tell you that testosterone treatment makes you angry. Well, lifters use corticosteroids from the adrenal gland. That's a whole different thing. That can make you angry, but not testosterone. It makes men and My happy. voice wasn't high pitched. Uh, yeah, you're right. So, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. So this makes you calm and happy and assertive. If you were assertive before, you'll be assertive again. That doesn't mean aggressive. Right. Not aggressive. Not aggressive. And, but and not flashing, flooding emotionally with anger. It, it was surprising to me to learn that that was a hormonal condition mm -hmm. rather than an emotional condition. Right. I mean, it was an emotional artifact. Right. But it was you felt a hormonal. The emotion. yeah. You felt the emotions, and that is a symptom. Right. But you didn't really put it together with with testosterone. No. And some people feel depressed when they ha when they don't have testosterone, and so they come in. And I once again, I can't say that everyone who's depressed gets better on testosterone. But if they've started feeling depressed, if you've started feeling depressed after the age of forty, but you didn't do that before, have that before, it easily could be testosterone loss. So. And the thing with depression is it always can be chemical or uh, hormonal, mm -hmm. and it can be situational. Right. I mean, you can have both at the same time. I mean, your dog can die, and you can be really sad and depressed, but you also can be out of balance chemically. Mm -hmm. One exacerbates the other. Right. But We can't fix the life, but we can fix how you perceive it. What I hear a lot from my patients who come in and they – their life's out of control. Right. They don't give me that as a symptom, but as I talk to them, I understand that their life has become out of control. They're yelling at their kids and their husband's upset all the time and they're upset all the time and things aren't working out and their people are losing right. jobs and things like that. Oh yeah. So they tell me this history while we're talking because we have a whole hour, so I get to have some of their social history involved in this. And when they come back, they go, man, all the things around me got worse in the last four months, but I handled it. And it's not bothering me. Right. Now, that's what testosterone does. Testosterone. <laughs> My life still sucks, but I'm happier. No, but I mean, it was almost like the last person that told me that she had somebody die in her family. Right. And then she had a dog that was sick and died. And, and right. she was. A lot of loss. Terrible loss and terrible emotions for her. And, and only if you love dogs would you understand this. And I understand. It. I almost cried with her. So, I mean, this all these things happened to her. But she said. But I held up. I could stand it. Yeah. I, not because all of her symptoms were gone, but that helped. But because her testosterone made her brain able to tolerate all of the slings and arrows of Outrageous life. Outrageous fortune, yes. So, so that that was a benefit, but not one that I can like write down. I can say handles emotions better, but they, there's no code for that in the uh, ICD-10 diagnostic codes. That's that's quality of life. I laughing because in my business, when people have insurance, which I, I didn't take, but I would give them paperwork to turn <laughs> mm -hmm. in, the insurance company always wanted a diagnostic code. There's mm -hmm. a code book that has a number mm -hmm. labels. It's called ICD-9 or 10. And the most common one that I, you have to always find, my, my challenge is mm -hmm. always find the most applicable but least damaging diagnosis. Right, because it'll go in their record forever. Yeah, and so, so there was one called 30928. Uh, <laughs> that was the ICD-9. That's an old code. literally <laughs> translates, crap's happening. Stuff's going on. 
<laughs> Does like, it really? Yeah. Bad stuff in your life. Yeah. 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 So and trying yeah. to handle it. Right. Uh, I don't have that. Guy. So I reach for that diagnosis more often mm-hmm. than I reach for others, but I resisted them as much there's, as I could. Yeah, there's a talent yeah. to this. Yeah. <laughs> when your doctor's listening to you but not really listening, they're thinking about the codes they have to put down. <laughs> yeah, now, I don't take insurance either, but we have certain codes that we use for hormone loss and hormone Well, and imbalance. for transfer of records and things like yeah. that. And the other doctors then will know what you've mm-hmm. done or what you're looking at, right. what your concerns are. So the reason we decided to have this conversation today is there was an article published by Dr. Keith Roach in his syndicated column around the country. A 69-year-old man had written to him and said, I'm, I'm getting put on testosterone replacement, and my doctor is trying to achieve, quote, normal levels. And I don't think I need normal levels, whatever that is, because I just have these few symptoms, and they're getting better on these little doses. So... How do I how do I consider what to do going forward? Do I let the doctor continue to increase my dosage? Would there be a benefit to that? Mm-hmm. Would there be a cost effect to that? Should I just stay where I am? And and in the discussion, the, this elderly gentleman had gone from uh, creams to shots, and Doctor Roach, in his response, also suggested pellets. Mm-hmm. But his his being Doctor Roach is generic answer was one that's relevant to our conversation Mm -hmm. because what he said was you can get your symptoms managed on less than quote normal levels Mm -hmm. but you need to understand that there are other benefits that will come to you other benefits that will happen in your life that aren't directly related to specific symptoms so that that's why we're having this conversation things that you can't feel yeah Things that you don't know is happening inside your body that you're repairing your brain every day. You're preventing other diseases. You're preventing reducing heart anxiety disease. and depression. Yeah, uh, that you may not notice. Bone density, muscle strength, things that you don't necessarily recognize because my headache's gone. You know, mm-hmm. you don't know that your muscle strength is better and you're going to stand upright and walk a hundred yards with more fluidity than you did three weeks ago. You right. just don't know. And you'll continue to walk yes. better for the rest of your life if you stay on the testosterone. Right. Because it will keep your bones and your muscles adequate for movement. That's the problem we get when we get older and we don't have testosterone for a number of years. We lose all our muscle mass, and that's right. why people fall. Right. Because they don't have balance. Right. They, their muscles are so shriveled up and so weak that they can't balance themselves, and so they fall. But their, their bones are brittle, too, and then their bones break. So it's a balance, it's lack of muscle, right. and then it's lack of, uh, of bone thickness. So, But these are things we're trying to prevent. Right. We're preventing heart disease, diabetes, uh, sarcopenia is what they call it when you, your muscles get really small and really weak. So, well, And, and it, that's what he's saying. In and, the 16 years that you've been focusing on this as mm-hmm. a specialty, you've evolved in, in your response through all the different methods of providing testosterone to the point where you just now do pellets. Right. You don't do the creams or, mm-hmm. or you don't do the injections. You don't do the uh, sublinguals. You, you just do the pellets. I did the creams and the gels 32 years ago. Yeah. And I did that until 16 years. And then for 16 years, I've only done pellets because I had all this experience with with other forms and they didn't work as well. Right. So... Tell Granted. Us, tell us why. In, in part because patients are chronically inconsistent when they're involved in the administration process. Right. Yeah. You know, I forget to take my, my pill tonight. I forget to put a cream on or I put too much cream on or, or I, left I get it such a kick out of the cream, I, I do vacation. it three times today. Yeah, or I cover my body with it. One person did yeah. that. She got hair all over her body. <laughs> I mean, I was just it felt good so everywhere. It was so good. I wanted more, you know, right away. It's so true. it's true. And yeah. and she was she was hairy all over. She put it everywhere. <laughs> anyway, there's the patient factor, but there's also the factor that pellets actually go under your skin and dissolve and you use it just like it's coming out of the testicle or the ovary. And so it is much more physiologically normal than a cream. A cream goes through your skin and it changes and it makes a lot of estrogen. Sometimes 80 to 90% of the testosterone you put on your skin becomes estrogen. Now it didn't in my patient or she wouldn't have gotten the hair, but it does in in men a lot. So the gels aren't as good. So, I mean, they just aren't as good for most men. They... And a little bit of testosterone 
is not how you do it because a little bit stops all of your own production. So you can't use a little bit in men because it shuts down your own production. So we have to use a full dose. So if you just use a little bit, you could have a net loss. Right. You could have a lower testosterone right. when we're done than when we started. Right. So this is, this is what you need to think about is quality of life and all of these things that you can't measure and you don't feel. Although when I feel really good, I know everything's working. So at the end of the day, then it is not good to get distracted by a focus on specific symptom relief or on normal ranges because there's not generic agreement about those normal ranges. Mm -hmm. they, they don't, compared to your age cohort or younger you or younger men. Uh, but there are benefits that more and more physicians, reputable physicians, are recognizing and acknowledging and it's worth having that discussion with your physician say would i benefit from this uh, do i have these symptoms that tell me it's now time to consider it but be aware that there can be more global profit from considering it than mm -hmm. just symptom relief thank you for listening email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance healthcast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.